and they that wait on him. They that wait upon the Lord shall be. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. It's good to be saved. Can you say amen? Amen. You know, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but I have two birthdays in December. How about that? Two, two birthdays in December. My, my, my flesh and blood birthday was yesterday so 60 years ago yesterday my mom gave birth to me she was 29 and I gave birth to Valerie and it's her birthday today too oh awesome yeah yeah so so if you're saved you have two birthdays too happy birthday happy birthday thank you happy birthday Amen. If you're saved, you have two birthdays too. So in two weeks is my second birthday. That's when I was born again. December 27th, 1983, up in the mountains of northern New Mexico. I prayed a, a prayer that I didn't really know was how much it was going to change my life. But it did. Amen. It was a powerful experience. Amen. I was, I was born again. Amen. And so, you know, that's been... 39 years, it'll be 39 years this year. And uh, you know, you might you might think, wow, how can you be saved 39 years? <laughs> uh, Brother Escobar that was just here shared with us that he had been serving the Lord now for 48 years. Amen. Sister Caroline, who just went to be with Jesus, had served the Lord for more than 40 years, probably 43 or 44 years. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Sister Caroline, such a such a wonderful example, because here's a lady who endured to the end. Yes. Amen. And you know that's what Jesus said. He said, "He who endures to the end shall be saved." Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, the thing about the Christian life is the Christian life is not easy. How many have found that to be true? Amen. You know, it's not easy to be a Christian. It's very challenging because there are a lot of a lot of changes that have to be made in our lives. There are a lot of a lot of uh, attitudes that we have to uh, get past, and and th there are some disappointments and there are some hardships that we face. And uh, but one thing that I learned many years ago is that is that it's it's much easier to live this life as a Christian than it is to live this life not a Christian. And you know what makes a difference? What makes a difference is Jesus. Amen. Is that God is with us. Amen. God lives inside us and he's with us all the time. 24-7. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. 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 Nevertheless, it is it, it, and it does require something from us, and it requires what it requires from us is that we have endurance. And so, I want to encourage you tonight to to understand and to get this settled down into your spirit, your mind. Is that I'm going to have to have endurance, and the reason we need endurance is because there are times where you feel like quitting. Amen. There are times where you can feel like giving up. There are times where it seems like God's nowhere in the picture. Like, where are you, God? Or how, how if, if you're there, Lord, how could this 
be. And so I'm going to talk to you about running the race with endurance. From Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance. Amen. The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. How many know we have a Savior that endured as well? Amen. Endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I mean, oh, Jesus finished his race. Amen. Amen. He did. He finished his race. When he was dying on the cross, one of the last things that he uttered from the cross was, it is finished. Amen. It is completely complete. His work that he came to do on the earth was completely complete. It was finished. And I want to tell you something, that he will help us to finish our race. Amen. Glory to God. And so I want you to just think about a couple of things with me this uh, this evening. Running with endurance, okay? In this text, he says that we're going to have to lay aside some things. He says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Or so easily entangles us. It catches us in its web and it doesn't let us make progress. It doesn't let us make the progress that we need to make. Amen. I remember as a as a, a brand new convert, I used to have this recurring dream. And actually it was a it was a nightmare. And in my dream, and this went on for I don't know how long, it went on for a while, uh, and then one day I was delivered from it. But I remember I would dream that I was in the mountains and there was a bear chasing me. And you know, that's a fearful thing. You know, because these are vicious animals, you know, they're, they, can, they can wipe you out in no time. But in my dream, always what would happen is I was running from this bear and it seemed like the bear was running like a locomotive uh, very fast, but I was running like I was running in mud. And it was, and it was like I could not pick up speed. I couldn't, I couldn't seem to get away. And but every time, thank the Lord, that it was getting close to me, I woke up and had a big sigh of relief. Whew, there's that dream like again. You couldn't lift up your head. <laughs> and so, so in that, you know, the, the reason I mentioned that is because it felt like I was running in mud. You ever, you ever walk in that kind of mud that builds on your shoes, you know, and, and it, you know, every step is a, is a, is a burden. Well, imagine trying to run a race where you can't run because you're weighed down. And this is the thing that the scripture is telling us. It says, let us lay aside every weight and sin that entangles us, that ensnares us, that keeps us from running as we should. So, you know, the weight, he says weight and sin, okay? Sin, we can understand. Sin is something that we have to get rid of. We have to unload things in our lives because they will not allow us to serve God. You know, when we live in sin, what we're doing is we're serving our own appetites. We're allowing sin to rule. We're allowing sin to have its way in our lives. And according to the scripture, whoever sins becomes a slave of sin. Sin ensnares and tangles us and, and pulls us down. Listen to Proverbs 5, 22. He, his own iniquities entrap the wicked man. And he is caught in the cords of his sin. Okay, so we know that sin brings bondage. We know that sin uh, uh, enslaves us. Jesus said whoever commits sin becomes the slave of sin. And how many know you can't serve God and sin. Yes, amen. Sin has to be repented of. Okay, so we understand that. Let's think about the weight for a moment. Because he says lay aside every weight. And, and these are things that aren't exactly sins. But they hinder us. By exhausting our time and our strength. They distract us from doing 
what we know we ought to do. Amen. You know, there are things like that in this life. You know, it, it could be something as simple as as uh, uh, a television program. Yeah. Amen. I remember when I, before when I was first saying going to church wasn't my first priority. It was kind of a priority, but I remember missing church to watch the A team. Oh, brother! <laughs> you know, I saw the A team later on, and I was, you know, I'm saved for many years, and I I was somewhere in a hotel or something, and I. And, I'm, and oh, the 18. So I sat there and I was watching this. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> this is lame. I'm like, what the heck did I miss church for this? Priorities were completely different. But when you when you start serving God, your priorities change. And you lay aside some of the, those things, like, you know, things that are, uh, that are uh, consuming, like social media. You realize that kids, they watch TikTok for hours and hours and hours on end. You know, I've seen some TikTok videos. I'm like, this is stupid. I don't want to see this. People dancing, doing all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, no. It can certainly waste your time. Games. You know, how many know computer games or video games can absolutely be a waste of time? I've learned that, you know, and I like video games. Don't get me wrong, I like them. But I can't play them because they rob me of my time. Like Amen. Whole life. Amen. They do. They, they, you know, even books can do that. Yes. Movies. Yes. You know, uh, binge watching. Anybody ever been watched something? Yes. You know, uh, a program that, and this is interesting and just, yes. uh, and it could be anything. Amen. Well, I don't know about the chosen. I haven't seen the chosen, but I hear it's good. You gotta see it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm saying is, is that there are some things that hinder us. And each one of us is different. And so you have to you have to just look at your own life and say, okay, is there something keeping me from spending time in prayer? Yeah. Is there something keeping me from reading the word of God? Is there something keeping me from going to church? No. You know, those are things that hinder. They weigh you down. So, you know, here's the idea. Imagine trying to run a race, but you're in chains. You're, you're, you're slow and you're weighed down. You know, the Christian life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. You know, that's why I mentioned, you know, people serve God for years. Years. Pastor Mitchell preached the gospel for over 50 years. You know? And so you're not going to, you know, uh, you know take, out, take off from the starting point in a sprint and go for 50 years. Amen. Amen. And so, you may run fast to begin with, but you won't run very far, and you won't run very long. And for sure, you won't run all the way. So the first thing that is needed is to get rid of the baggage. Lighten the load. So you're not trying to serve God and serving, you know, the lust of the flesh or, you know, the, the lust of the eyes or, or the, the things of this world. You've got to get rid of the baggage. Okay. So the next thing we need is a proper mindset and attitude. Okay. And we have to understand, as I mentioned, that this, the Christian life is something that is done with patience. Amen. I'm not saying you need to pray for patience. I need, I'm need. i saying you need to have patience. Not everything happens on our timetable. You know, we pray and we expect something to happen. Presto, there it is. You know, we want microwave popcorn prayers. You know, two minutes and there they are. You know, in the old days, if you wanted popcorn, you had to plant it. Yeah, you had to water it. You had to weed it. But mainly you had to wait. <laughs> wait you know, they say, I don't know if it's true, but they say that the, the American Indians are the ones that show popcorn to, to people, to us, you know. And so, but it was a process. The same thing is true in serving God. We have to have patience and we have to learn to have self-discipline. 
Amen. We have to learn to wait. They that wait upon the Lord. That scripture. Amen. We, we need to understand that this life is not something that is accomplished in a day Amen. or a week Amen. or a month or even a year. It's a lifetime. This is a, this is a mindset. And, and so the mindset, when you understand it like that, you, you begin to understand the need to have endurance. Endurance means that you can keep going even when you feel discouraged. If you read, ever read about, about uh, marathon runners, they reach a certain point where they just feel like giving up. And they all know, they know that this is something that every runner goes through because they've been educated or they've experienced it already that I reach a certain point where I am in pain my body does not want to take one more step, but I press through it and break through it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The same thing is true in this life. There are times where we need to just endure even though we don't feel like it. Listen to the scripture in Ecclesiastes, a great scripture. Um, first part of verse 11, Ecclesiastes 9. It says, the race is not to the swift nor the battle. To the strong. Amen. I'm going to tell you that's true in the kingdom of God. In the world, the fastest and the strongest usually win. You hear me? The fastest and the strongest are the ones who usually win. It's not the weak. It's not the, the meek. It is those who are fast and who are strong. In the kingdom of God, it's not the same. In the kingdom of God, the ones who win are those who learn to trust the Lord. Amen. See, the Christian life is endurance in your faith. Amen. It is, it is to be faithful to the end. That even when things look bad, you still believe. You still trust. You still pray. Amen. You don't give up. I have a, a short video I want to show you. Um, Michelangelo is going to come and turn it on for us. Praise God. Let's see if, if he gets that for us. I think he forgot about it. That's okay. He'll get it. Anyway, in this video, this is from, from uh, the 700 Club. And we, we're going to see a short, it's like a three minute testimony of a man who who went through some things but he had to he had to endure and he had to wait for God. Okay, so that's a big In 2013, Charles Lockridge was sitting down in a chair when it broke. Feet went up and I landed on my back. The next day he started feeling a sharp pain in his back between the shoulder blades just wouldn't go away, it wouldn't stop. And it just felt like somebody was jabbing me all the time or something. After battling the pain for a few months, he went to his doctor who put him in physical therapy. It helped for a while, but the pain soon came back. Almost two years later, the pain became more insistent and it was starting to become a regular part of my life again. That's when I went back to the doctors. Surgery was an option but his doctor first wanted him to try a more extreme physical therapy regime. And they sent me off to what's called a, a back boot camp where you specifically work on strengthening your back. It's intensive. The therapy only gave him temporary relief, and Charles found it difficult to keep up his normal life. It impacts your quality of life because you're in pain. And being in pain wears you out. You can't do a lot of the things that you would like to do. When there's pain involved, and you just want relief. One morning in 2016, he woke up to another problem. I could not see out of my left eye. All I could see was some shapes and some colors, and everything would be very, very fuzzy. He was diagnosed with Bell's palsy, a condition that weakens the muscles in the face. It also left his eye red and swollen. My back's messed up, and, and this is messed up. And now I can't even see, what am I going to do? I 
can't work. I, I couldn't make any sense out of it. The doctor gave him medication for his facial muscles, but it would take at least four to six months for his eye to heal. They really had nothing for the guy, just to wait and see at that point. I just kept praying. I kept praying. You know, sometimes my frustration would, would come out and, you know, hey, what's taking so long? Two months later, Charles is watching TV at his home. If I'm at home by myself, I'll turn on the TV and I'll look for something that I think will lift my spirits. That day, I just ran across the seminar club and Terry starts praying. I don't know, so you've had a fall that's really thrown your back out of whack and uh, nothing you take seems to help at all. God's healing that for you right now. Just receive it. Thank you. Thank you. And I didn't necessarily know that it was for me. But when she prayed for the eye, I don't know if you have a condition with your eye. It's like the very rim, top and bottom, gets red, and there's a crustiness that comes from it, but it's very irritating. God's healing that for you right now. I just knew. I just knew that it was that it was for me. And I started saying thank you. I started saying thank you, Lord. But I woke up the next day, and, and the eye was better, like just all the way better. As soon as I woke up, I noticed it. Charles also noticed something else. Over the next week, all of a sudden it dawned on me that my back doesn't hurt anymore. With his back pain completely gone, Charles went back to work and has been working pain-free ever since. Sometimes it, it takes trust in him when it doesn't look like there's anything happening, where every indicator is, no, it's not going to work. And... I think sometimes God looks for those situations because then it's clearly Him. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Michael. Amen. You can go back to pray worse. Uh, God is, uh, you know, God works this way. And, you know, I was thinking of this little story. He's like, what's taking so long? You know, frustrated. Life is like that, isn't it? Sometimes we're just, you know, What's going on here? What's happening? Is, it, is anything ever going to change? And so in our scripture, he says to lay aside every weight and every sin and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. But what I want you to look at with me is verse 2. He says, this is the key here. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's why the scripture says, look unto Jesus, because the race is not always to the swift or the strong. And in the kingdom of God, the way it works is that God is the one who makes the weak strong. And that's, that's, that's what we look to. That's why I'm preaching this sermon, because sometimes we, we can get so discouraged with what's happening or not happening in our lives and and so he it tells us if you look to Jesus things can change amen. amen prayer changes things prayer makes a huge difference amen trusting God makes a huge difference let me read for you Isaiah 40 uh, verse 28 to 31 this scripture is part of this one of the songs that we sang today it says have you not known have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Okay. It says he, he doesn't get tired. How many know God is almighty? Amen. God doesn't get worn out. We get worn out. I'll tell you by Sunday night, I was, I was worn out. I was ready for a, a rest. Amen. After the weekend, it was so busy. Amen. But God doesn't ever get tired. In verse 29, it says, He gives power to the weak. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. And to those who have no might, yes. He increases strength. Amen. What we're talking about here is supernatural enabling, supernatural endurance. Amen. He says that we need to endure. But the only way that we can endure it is by looking to Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
It says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. That, you know, that's saying that, you know, the, the fast and the strong in the world who rely on the flesh, they will fail. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I want to encourage you that, you know, there are times where you feel like giving up. This is a great scripture to read because you can, you can call to God. You can cry out to God and God will strengthen you. Yes, amen. 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 You can put your faith and your trust in him. Amen. This is why the apostle Paul said in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, amen. What you think you cannot do, you can do through Christ who strengthens you, yes, who gives amen. you the strength. What should seem to be impossible with God is not impossible. Amen. amen. In his suffering, the Apostle Paul, uh, it says he had a thorn in the flesh. You read about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And he says this, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Amen. He said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. Amen. So when you're weak, then God will strengthen you. Sometimes I think God lets us go through things so that we will learn to rely on him. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I, there's many stories in the Old Testament that show this. And just to, just to mention a few, I think of David and Goliath. Amen. Uh, Pastor Escobar preached about David and Goliath the other night. And, you know, David should not have been able to defeat Goliath. You know, he wasn't a soldier. He was just a boy with a slingshot and a stick. And, and when Goliath saw him, he mocked him and cursed him by his guts. He tried to, to pronounce a curse upon him. But David said, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. And what did God do? God gave David strength to defeat the giant. You got some giants in your life. And I tell you, God will give you the strength to defeat them. But you have to have faith. I think of Daniel and the lions. You know, they throw him into a pit of lions, pit of hungry lions, and he prays to his God, and God shuts the mouth of the lions. He sends an angel, and he shuts the mouth of the lions. Do you think those lions were hungry? Absolutely they were hungry. Because when... Uh, King Darius brought him up out of the pit, the lion's den, and threw his accusers, his false accusers, I should say, into the into the den of lions. It says that the lions broke their bones before they ever hit the ground. They were hungry. But God took care of him. Amen. See, those who learn to depend on God are the ones who get the victory. Think of Jehoshaphat, the great army that was coming against them. Huge army that outnumbered them. What did he do? He prayed. He prayed to God and God gave him a strategy. He said, okay, tomorrow you're not going to have to fight. What you do is you take the army out, but put the singers in the front. Put the musicians out front. How'd you like to have to be in the praise team and be out there facing the army? Oh boy. But then you get to worship God and the beauty of holiness. And what happened? God defeated the army. They got confused and started fighting each other and they killed each other. That's pretty awesome. Think of Elisha and his servant, you know. Uh, the king says, who's telling uh, the king of Israel what we're going to do? And they said, it's the prophet Elisha and he's over in a city called Dotham. And so he says, send the army and bring him to me. So in the morning, when Elisha's servant gets up, he goes outside and he looks, and all the mountains all around him, they're surrounded by, by this army. He's like, oh, 
Master, what are we going to do? He's panicking. And what did Elisha say? He says, there are more with us than with them. And his servant's like, what? My master's lost his mind. And he prays. Elisha prays. He says, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And God opened the eyes of the servant. What did he see? Chariots of fire surrounding the other army. And he saw, in fact, that there was more with them than with this flesh and blood army. And what did God do? God listened to Elisha and struck them with blindness. Great story. But here's the thing. Two guys, massive army, and because they trusted God, God moved on their behalf. Amen. King Hezekiah. You know, Sennacherib is coming to, to try to destroy them. He prays. And that night, God sends one angel. Your angel. Just one angel. And, and slays 185,000 soldiers. And they didn't have to fight. Amen. They did not have to fight. Why? Because when there's weakness and those who are weak put their trust in God, God gives them the victory. So I want you to think about this, okay? He says to us, let us run the race with endurance. Amen. Let us run the race that set before us with endurance. Okay, so here's what I'm going to close with this idea. That is, this has got to be our attitude. I'm not going to win because I'm smart, because I'm fast, because I'm strong. I will win because I'm looking unto Jesus. I will get the victory because I'm looking unto Jesus. I'm not focused on my circumstances. I'm not focused on the enemy. I'm focused on Jesus. And that's what the scripture says. It says for us to run with endurance this race. And it says looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. What a powerful thing. It calls him the author and the the finisher. You know what that means? That means that he started us on this path and he's going to see us through all the way to the end. In Philippians 1 6, Paul wrote this. He says, Be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. In other words, the work that God started in you. He's going to finish. Amen. He's going to finish. That's why we can run the race with endurance. Because we look to him. We don't look to ourselves. And, and you know that sometimes that's hard to do. Sometimes it's 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 so hard to just focus on Christ. Because Whatever is happening in our life, whether it's sickness or whether it's financial issues, whatever it is, that captures our attention. Amen. Let's bow our heads together.